go around flaps, thrust levers through to toe gap. We move the flaps in one stage from four to three. We check our FMAs. We've got Mantoga SRS NAV, which is what we wanted. And now we've got positive climb, raise the landing gear. And there it is. Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, 320 Sim Pilots. In today's video, I'll be talking through how to go around in the Airbus A320 and also what comes next. How do we deal with the actions after a go around? How do we set up the aircraft for another approach? Where do we approach the aircraft? Do we take it back into the airfield or do we go to a different one? There's a whole host of decision making and processes that we follow. Uh, it's a complex and high workload time and I've had a few questions uh, from, from community members asking me what we would do in that situation. So in this video, I'll take you through all of that. This could be useful if you're flying on VATSIM and you end up going around, as I have done many times on live streams, or if you are simply trying to simulate a flight in uh, your home simulator and you find that the weather wasn't good enough or your approach wasn't quite right and you have to go around. What comes next? How do we decide? And what do we need to actually do? I'll be using the Phoenix Simulations A320 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. For this short flight, we're uh, on about to start our descent into Venice. Our alternate today's, for today's flight is Bologna. This will be chosen by your airline or your flight planning software, um, but you can also, of course, change that as you see fit, and we would do on the day if we thought we needed a different alternate for whatever reason. But these are all things I'll discuss as we go through the video. As ever, I am a real-world Airbus pilot, but this is not for any real-world use. It's just to give you some extra context on your home simulations. Right, let's get started. So here we are now in the very short cruise. We're about to begin our descent in towards Venice, and here is our star, the Albert II Echo, followed by the RLS Zulu onto runway 04 right, as you can see here. The weather is nice, as you can see down here. We have Cabo K, 13 degrees, QNH1017. So that's just to give you an idea. It's a pretty straightforward arrival into a nice day at a, a simple enough airfield. To show you the charts, we have uh, arrival here. Now, remember, if you're flying this in Flight Simulator, you don't necessarily have to have all these charts. I'm just showing you everything because this is what we would have on the real aircraft. But uh, of course, if you're just flying your approach, you're going to be more interested in what comes later on but just to set up the idea so this is the arrival and then we're expecting probably to get cut short in from albert maybe towards laren and then after laren we will dry, join this ils fly the ils down to the runway and then we may today have to talk about a go around so i'm going to fly this go around procedure and show you how we're going to do that um, and also what we'll do next so there's lots and lots of reasons we could end up on this go-around procedure. It is unusual. Aircraft don't go around that often. It's a totally normal procedure, and every day lots and lots of aircraft will go around, but out of all the flights, it's relatively rare. I don't find myself going around particularly often, maybe once a year sort of thing. That's not to say we don't always have it as an option, and we don't sometimes get close to it, but uh, yeah, it's a, it is a, a relatively uncommon occurrence, and therefore it can become a little bit uh, overwhelming if you're not properly prepared for it. The go around is a workload management exercise in a lot of senses. We need to manage what, everything going on and a lot will happen all at once because you're going from a situation where you're on approach and about to land to suddenly basically taking off again uh, and then putting yourself right back at the start of the flight phase. Before you fly an approach, what you do need to do is make sure your go around is set up correctly. In the Airbus, this means on the flight plan page, you can scroll through all the waypoints of the arrival and then you get to the blue text this is the go around itself as you can see here it's coded Papa Zulu 702 and if I look on the chart Papa Zulu 702 is this waypoint here I'll just make that a bit bigger for you um, yeah so that's the first waypoint and I can go to plan on the EFIS control zoom in and as I scroll down once you get it into line select 2 you, it will appear here and there you go Papa Zulu 702 I can also see a 200 knot speed restriction here coded into the Airbus's uh, MCDU or FMGC. And if I go to the go around briefing strip up here, I can see max 200 knots at Papa Zulu 702. You can also see it says proceed on runway heading to 5,000 feet. So we know that if we go around, we're going to climb straight away to 5,000 feet. At Papa Zulu 702, we make a right turn at 200 knots maximum onto 117 to Papa Zulu 703, which is this leg here. And if you can see again, this is coded correctly in our MCDU, Papa Zulu 703, still at 200 knots. From there, we go to Ocado, which is down here. And at Ocado, there is a hold for us to join. And then you can see here on the Airbus, if I scroll down, 
it says manual because it's talking about a manual hold but you can see it there uh, with the white arrow returning on itself that tells me that the aircraft is expecting to fly a hold there so there we go that is uh, the correct go around procedure i'm happy with that and there's a 200 knot limit um, so we'll climb to 5,000 feet, follow that route, and enter the hold here. It sounds pretty straightforward. We do brief these things uh, regularly. Let me just put in uh, initial descent. But something else worth checking is what mode or what would it expect to do to fly the go around, and how do you go around in the Airbus? So I'm going to talk about a simple, straightforward go around. That means we are on the approach and we are below the uh, go around altitude which today is 5,000 feet, quite low. So by the time we're on approach, we're pretty much below it. Basically, all we're going to do is we say the words go around flaps. We push the thrust levers fully forward, which will put them into toga. They're going to then spool up. We're going to move the flaps in one stage from wherever they are. So if they're at three, we'll move them to two. If they're at full, we'll move them to three. If they're at two, we'll move them to one. And it could be any combination of these. Now, if you're at one, moving them to zero is not necessarily recommended, uh, but that's a topic for another video. Uh, but it's an unusual situation that to be doing a full go around procedure. But yeah, full to three is just effectively what we would do today because I'm expecting to land flat full. We would then check our flight mode enunciators up here. So what are they saying? They should say something like man toga. It should tell me that I'm commanding toga thrust. Uh, and then SRS because it goes back into like a takeoff, the speed reference system. and this aircraft should go straight back into nav. Now why do I say this aircraft? If you go to your sim settings, make sure that in your airline modifiable information you have nav in the go around enabled. If you don't, what your aircraft will do is actually it will just revert into a heading or track and it will just keep flying in a straight line. And we don't want that, we want it to fly that procedure we've seen so nicely coded in the MCDU. So by having nav in the go around, ticked in here it will automatically revert to nav when you go around that is a common configuration for airliners today or even old airbuses can be modified to have that so no matter how old your airbus is that pretty much can be modified in so it's rare to see it without it it's much better that you can do that uh, automatically because if you have a, a sudden turn in the go around or you're near terrain it's much better that the aircraft just gets straight onto the missed approach path but there we go then we're going to have positive climb call and we're going to raise the landing gear. Now that sounds like quite a lot, but if I run through it in one go as a summary, what we'll do is we'll say, go around flaps, thrust levers all the way through to toga, move the flaps in one stage, check the FMA, say man toga SRS and hopefully nav, positive climb that we check on the vertical speed indicator, and then gear up. And that's it. Now we're climbing away and we're basically in a takeoff. We'll be climbing away flap three, so it'll be like a flap three takeoff. And then as we accelerate through our acceleration altitude, which we can see here, if we go next phase, next phase, 1500 feet, it will flash at us, leave a climb, bring the thrust levers from toga two clicks back to climb when it tells us to, and accelerate, get above the green F speed, and then we can go to flap one, and then above the green S, flap zero. Interestingly today, because of that 200 knot restriction, our clean speed is 203, we're actually gonna leave flap one out for the go around. And that's an important thing to note, Lots of go-arounds have speed restrictions um, and sometimes they're too slow for you. So we are a bit heavy today to fly that clean. So we'll be leaving flap one out, um, but I can leave it in managed speed and it will stay at 203 knots and that's fine. So I'll show you all of that. Don't worry too much about it. Um, but yeah, that is what we'll be doing. And then afterwards, I'll talk you through what we would do next. Just something to note is that we are expected to fly the missed approach procedure. If you're flying, if we were cleared for the ILS and we decide to go around, let's say we didn't like our approach, let's say we were unstable, and by unstable I mean we were too fast or we weren't quite on the right profile, we forgot something, then we are, and we say we're going around, we expect to fly this missed approach. This is the published missed approach. These would be planned to work on single engine typically, uh, unless there's a, a note saying otherwise or your airline has information otherwise, and it would uh, keep you safe from terrain and then it will put you in a position where you could potentially restart. And as you can see, this approach actually has the makings of a second approach built into it. Not all of them do. Some of them you'll expect radar vectors or to be cleared back onto maybe to Laren or something. But this one has quite a clear route from Ricardo. You could go 704, Kirsthaf and back in on the ILS. But anyway, the point is you don't just fly around on headings or anything. You do the published missed approach unless told otherwise by air traffic control. If they do tell you something different, make sure you're happy that it's the safe thing to do. 
So we're now joining the ILS. There's our glide slope to start. Put the going altitude in, 5,000 feet. And that is now here and blue. On the newer Airbus fits, on the Neos and so on, that's now actually white. But anyway, here we go. It's blue, i.e. it's armed in the event of a go around. So this is actually a pretty sporty approach. Let's get the speed brakes out. <laughs> Joining an ILS clean is never a good idea. But we are below 230 knots, so we'll go flat one. With the tailwind like this as well, you'd probably have to lower, you would have to lower the gear in the real aircraft. We seem to be getting away with it in the Phoenix today. But anyway, this is a good example of a reason we might end up going around. This is now turning into a pretty rushed approach, um, and we could find ourselves unstable. I.e., as we get down towards a thousand feet above the runway, we might be too fast, or we might not have managed to get all the flaps out, or anything like that. It's actually working out today. Again, I would be slightly. I wouldn't really expect this to have worked in the, the real aircraft, but uh, there we go. So we are, there we go, 200 knots, let's go to flat two. Okay, some big stutters from the sim, but there we go. Uh, yeah, I think that's Venice loading in over there. <laughs> right, so brakes going away. And yeah, why might we end up going around off this approach? Well, it could be a whole load of reasons. As I just discussed, are we unstable? Is it the weather? Is a tailwind outside of our limits? Let's say this tailwind doesn't disappear. I'm expecting this to turn into a light headwind by the time we're down there, but what if it doesn't? What if we get blown suddenly by a downdraft from a nearby thunderstorm? Not likely today, but uh, it could happen on sort of turbulent or unsettled days. What if an aircraft in front breaks on the runway? Uh, let's say they miss their exit. Or what if they land and then they uh, lose a hydraulic system and spill fluid over the runway? What if we have a bird strike and an engine failure and don't have time to secure the engine? Are we going to land or are we going to go around, secure the engine and then land? Um, what if we suddenly lose our brakes on final approach? Let's say when we put the gear down, the brake test doesn't work and we get a caution brake system fault. Are we then going to carry on and land or are we going to go around? The, the possibilities are remarkably endless. There are so many ways we could actually have to go around and it's a testament to the safety and rigour that goes into modern aviation that we don't go around more often. So all of those reasons in mind, uh, it's time for us to configure and then we'll fly the go around. So I'm going to put the gear down, arm the ground spoilers, nose lights on, we can go flat three, and we'll go flat four. So there we go. Fully configured now. This approach has worked out nicely. Sorry about the stuttering. <laughs> I haven't seen that it's quite as bad for a while. Scenery is looking great, but it's clearly uh, taking its toll. And there's Venice itself. Fantastic. But as we can see today, nice day. It could be that we've got down to our minima. So you can see here, 207 barrow. If we get to 207 feet and we can't see the runway, then that's also a go around, of course, as well. You can see now that the go around is showing nicely. So that is the route we're going to take if we need it. And I'm going to run through our actions once more. There's our Lanny memo. So we're going to say go around flaps, thrust levers all the way through to toga. We'll move the flaps up one stage. We'll check that our FMAs have gone correctly into man toga, SRS and nav. And then we'll look for positive climb on the virtual speed indicator and then raise the landing gear. We're then into a normal takeoff sequence. And then I'll talk you through what we do next. So let's say we get to this point and uh, we are actually stable, but maybe air traffic control says, or the plane in front now reports that they've had a braking issue and they're stopping on the runway um, until they can figure out how to get off the runway. So we get told to go around by air traffic control. Or maybe we decide to, but either way, let's do it. So I'll show you like this. So we go, go around flaps, thrust levers through to toga. We move the flaps in one stage from four to three. We check our FMAs. We've got Mantoga SRS nav, which is what we wanted. And now we've got positive climb, raise the landing gear. And there it is. Now this looks very much like a takeoff. Fortunately, it has gone into nav, so we can expect it to fly this route. We're above 1500 feet, so we're getting the normal takeoff acceleration, lever climb. So we bring the thrust levers back two stages, back to climb as it's asking us to. Thrust climb, open climb, order thrust is now activated. And we want to check that we have an out blue here showing that 5,000 feet is armed correctly. That's where it's going to stop. Good. Now we're above the F. We can bring the flaps on three to one, just like on a takeoff. And we agreed already that we can't quite, although actually, interestingly, it's, it's showing a target speed of 203. Now, the Airbus will go around to the target to green dot speed. It's very good. It knows you've gone around. 
so it actually is saying that but I know it's going to actually cut back to 200 knots in a second as it reaches that waypoint so I'm going to leave the flaps out or flap one out for, the, for what we're doing and there we go pretty straightforward if your airline has an after take of climb checklist then you would run that at this point and now we are climbing away in a correctly configured A320 what I want to show you as well is that it's flying down no longer in the ILS it's not it's not following the localizer it is in nav mode and it's driving itself towards Papa Zulu 702 waypoint here see the localizer disappear off there as we pass the runway there's speed out star now I can see as I said it's targeting 203 it should be 200 maximum um, the aircraft would do the 200s it's not you know it's not the end of the world if you're three knots fast but anyway all missed approaches are different so you could have a different speed limit if you're not happy with what it's doing at any point in all of this let's say the nav isn't working well um, or let's say yours went into heading when we went around then tell you what you want push that to put it into nav uh, it's doing 203 knots I wanted 200 so I'm going to pull that and go to 200 and there we go so what do we do now as I said if your airline has an after takeoff checklist then you might run that which will often include things like um, are the wheels up um, we have left flap one out so the speed brakes are staying armed slightly unusual but there we go we aren't clean yet so we'll do we'll leave it as it is to remind us so what what is the exact next step and this is the question I've been asked a lot and you find yourself sitting here well first of all you need to fly the aircraft keep focused on what's going on there's lots of ways for this to trip you up now let's say I did leave it in managed speed and it's at this 203 knots that's fine we're leaving the flaps out because we decided we needed to but what if this speed restriction wasn't here at this waypoint what the aircraft will do in managed speed is suddenly accelerate so if you start getting distracted I don't know talking to the passengers or something right now uh, and then that speed limit is no longer there the aircraft will suddenly accelerate and you'll overspeed the flaps that's just an example um, what if the go around has a step climb in it maybe we're supposed to climb to 6,000 feet by the time we're in the hold then you know all of these things could be missed if we don't keep ourselves focused so what it's become is, like I said earlier, a workload management exercise now. What's most important? And always, as pilots, that's flying the airplane. We've got to keep the airplane in the right place, the right airspeed. Don't let yourself get too drawn in. If air traffic are hassling you at this point, and they may well have a lot of questions for you. Why did you go around? What are you going to do now? Um, and who knows? What's your fuel endurance? <laughs> All sorts of strange questions sometimes come out of air traffic control. But you may need to keep them um, at arm's length for this immediate bit until we've fully settled the aircraft. I can see here that the, the speed limit in the hold is 210 knots, it's 200 knots here. I'm going to free up some workload, as we said, um, I'm going to go to 203 knots and then I'm going to flap zero. Now slightly cheeky, you wouldn't really want to do that but I'm doing that for the sake of the video just to free up some workload. Uh, what are the landing lights on actually? Cool. But these are all things that you need to consider and prioritise and flying the airplane is always going to come top of that. Good. So now we've got the airplane sort of in a, in a secure position. We're clean, we've got a selected speed, we're going to enter a hold and we're above the terrain uh, of 5,000 feet and we're over the water and luckily today we're visual. You may not be of course if it was a foggy day but there we go. So now let's think about a review of what actually just happened. Well we just went around. We went around because someone was on the runway in front of us and they blocked the runway. Not ideal. So that is the situation we're in. That situation review could cover lots of things. Maybe we could say we went around because the weather wasn't quite good enough, we didn't see the ground. Maybe we went around because we were unstable. And all of these things are then going to factor into what happens next. Another thing you would immediately be thinking about is fuel. How much fuel have we got at this point? So I've now got 2.8 tonnes of fuel on board. How long is that realistically going to last me? Uh, and what am I going to use it for? And this is where this video is going to get tricky. <laughs> and this is a big, big topic. 2,840 kilos is plenty of fuel. As you can see, our fuel flow is 800 kilos per side. So we're burning about just under two tons an hour. So we've got two, and a, uh, sorry, two tons per hour. So we've got one hour plus maybe another half. So we've got about one and a half hours until we run out of fuel. That sounds like quite a lot, but we need to land with half an hour of fuel, our 1.2 tons final reserve fuel. That's what we are expected to land with. You can actually go into MCDU and see a better setup for this with fuel prediction page. And here we can see 
Uh, final, they've got one ton, actually. I'm going to make it 1.2, which is a bit more normal on the CEO, but there we go. 1.2 tons of fuel, uh, although if you're light enough, it could be lower. Um, so that is what we expected to land with. If we're not going to, if at any point in all this, we don't think we're landing with 1.2 tons, then we declare a mayday. So 1.2 to 2.8. So we've actually got, uh, if you take that away from it, you've got 2.8, goes down to 1.8, goes down to 1.6. So we've got 1.6 tons of fuel to play with. Now, why did we go around and are we going to stay in Venice? Here we are just entering the hold. If we need to divert, our alternate fuel down here is one ton. Now this you can get from your uh, Simbri flight plan or, or however you, you did your flight planning, but your alternate fuel figure um, will be on there uh, and today it was one ton. So what that actually means is we've only got, from our 1.6 tons, we've only got one ton, uh, sorry, 600 kilos spare. So we've got 600 kilograms of fuel now, which we can burn before we have to divert, if we want to divert. Because at that point, we have to, when we get down to 2.2 uh, .2 tons of fuel in the aircraft, which is these two added together, minimum destination fuel on board, 2.2. When we get down to 2.2 tons, we need to be diverting if we're going to divert. Because if we divert any later than that, we'll arrive in our alternate, Bologna, with less than final reserves, and we'll have to declare a mayday. Not an ideal situation. So what are we going to do about this then? Well, like I say, it all comes down to what was the reason for going around. If it was us, then maybe we could consider flying another approach. Were we unstable uh, and we just, just because we forgot to put the gear down early enough or we got caught out by the uh, vectors on the approach and we got distracted and therefore were unstable? No problem if so, but then we could consider just flying another approach. What if it was the weather? Was that fog bad? Was it worse than expected? Do we then need to reconsider flying um, a second approach? Is it worth trying again because it was almost there? Um, or is it that it's getting worse? Maybe it's getting better uh, and it was we were just a little bit too early. Has an aircraft after us managed to fly in through the fog and, and see the runway? Uh, and are they the same sort of aeroplane, i.e. that they have better landing capability or worse landing capability than us? The, the list really does uh, become quite endless here. We said our, our reason today was that the runway was blocked, so the aircraft in front, unfortunately, um, broke on the runway. Venice has a second runway, it has 04 left, but that is mainly used as a taxiway. Is that now an option for us to land on, or is that going to take too long? How long will it take them to prepare that? We've only got 600 kilos spare, remember, um, and our other runway is blocked, so I don't want to burn my alternate fuel staying here. But here's another idea. What if... Um, we went around because air traffic control got us too close to the airplane in front so they sent us around and that airplane uh, landed and vacated as normal and the runway is now clear and we're ready for our next approach so it was air traffic's fault really do we want to stay here and fly a second approach we could do that straight away maybe if we think about it as well let's say we had less than 600 kilos let's say we were now down on our alternate fuel let's say we had 2.2 .2 tons of fuel on board i.e. the figure I said earlier we need to divert to Bologna with well what if as I said, the airport was still open, the runway was available, it was just because of air traffic control, and now we have 2.2 .2 tons of fuel. Should we divert to Bologna or should we stay here and fly that second approach? Well, this is all things that we consider and different airlines will have different policies uh, and different countries will have different policies. But in general, if we think we can land on this 04 right, landing is pretty much assured uh, and the aircraft in front has vacated the runway, then we could consider not keeping that alternate fuel uh, and actually using it to fly a second approach because there's no point diverting to Bologna just to arrive there with final reserve fuel uh, and have to just land straight away anyway when we could stay here and try again which is where we're supposed to be and we'll have more fuel in tanks to do it we won't be wasting it whilst diverting so there's something else you could consider as well but you wouldn't do that for example on a foggy day if you can't guarantee the weather's going to be good enough to get in Airports with two runways sometimes make planning things like that easier because you know that the other one might be available. But Venice, as we said, could take a while to get that second runway up and running. Um, what is the weather forecast like? So as I said, is the weather getting better or worse here in Venice? And what is the weather doing in our alternate? If we go to Bologna, is the weather expected to be better there or worse? You'd hope better, but has it stayed better? Has that come true? Forecasts aren't always correct. So you might need to, let's say we couldn't get into Venice because the weather was too bad, you'd start getting a lot of weather information now. We'd sit in the hold and we'd be trying to find weather from uh, Bologna and any other airports, maybe even back in Milan, that we might be able to reach with the fuel we've got. So we have an option. We want a cast iron option. Pilots want a plan that works. 
um, even if it's not ideal. So we are now thinking of finding any airport we can land at safely if we need to, if we can't get into Venice. And that way, if we find an airport just up the road that does have good weather, maybe we can stay here, fly a second approach and go there. So you're going to do all of these things. Uh, it goes on and on and on. Is there a queue at the alternate? You know, if lots of aircraft have failed to land in Venice this morning, perhaps they're all sending off, flying off to Bologna right now, and we're going to have to go and join the back of the queue. So then we're going to arrive at the alternate with uh, a queue in front of us, which is not a great situation because then you could end up holding and burning more fuel. So in that case, we might need to divert right now. Maybe we haven't got enough fuel to wait because we know we're going to find a queue in Bologna if everyone's had to divert there. So yeah, loads and loads and loads of different options. I know that could be a bit overwhelming. I'm just trying to show you what flying aircraft is in even in 2023 <laughs> and show you that this is all things that despite this aircraft sitting here flying the hold beautifully at 5,000 feet, it is not thinking about any of those things. It is just flying the hold. And that's where an autopilot is not replacing pilots at the moment. We're not, um, not even close. The, the amount of decision-making and, and workload management and prioritization that goes on at these points is vast and that, that is essentially what pilots are trained for in the simulators so all of those options have been discussed um, and what are we going to do so in our case uh, Venice we couldn't land on the 04 right and then the airfield uh, can't get the other runway open in time let's say there's an aircraft parked on it or something like that which often happens to disused runways or, or secondary runways so now we're going to come up with a bit of a plan and we want a plan A and a plan B so essentially plan A would be stay in the hold, use a bit more fuel and hopefully that aircraft can be cleared off the runway and then we can land it back into Venice. Plan B is stay in the hold, uh, burn that fuel and if they still haven't managed then we'll divert to Bologna. I would then suggest we figure out a final figure, we would start setting some sort of uh, fuel figures that we want to have at each stage in the process. So we've said we need to have 2.2 2 2 tons we need to be diverting. I'm going to raise that slightly and go for 2.4 tons. At 2.4 tons I want to set off to Bologna. I'm then going to consider how we are going to manage this so I would speak to the, you know you're speaking to air traffic control, speaking to your crew, you're speaking to the passengers, letting them all know what's going on. Because we remember the aircraft's in a safe state here and you've got one pilot flying it and then um, the other pilot can sort of manage these other things. It'd be worth letting air traffic control know your intentions because they don't want to be surprised by you suddenly saying I'm diverting when they thought you were going to sit and wait for a bit longer because they don't know how much fuel you've got on board. And then we're going to set up the aircraft of course for what we're planning to fly. So how do we do that? As you can see at the moment, it's still got the Venice arrival, uh, and we're now we, we're now thinking we're going to divert to Bologna. But what you can do is copy the active into the secondary, and then in the secondary flight plan, I could change the destination. Well, to do that, you go to any waypoint, new destination, Lima India Papa Echo, which is Bologna. Put it in, select it, arrival. Let's say INS onto Zulu runway. Uh, let's say one two. Uh, and then you might not know you're at VIA or um, you might know your arrival already but there we go and now if we go to plan it should there we go show us our uh, arrival into there's a go around and there's the RS12 in Bologna so that's now in there and then in the secondary you could also go to Perth and you can check that all the performance is filled in correctly. You could put in the new weather, the new minima for your different approach. So you would go now, bring up your charts for where you're thinking of going, uh, which is here, Bologna. And I can press on the charts, approach, RS Zulu runway 12. And here it is. And we can put in our minima now, get C327. Barrow, do config full landing again. You work out your new performance and you'd get the latest weather from air traffic control. So now our primary flight plan still includes plan A, which is to return into uh, Venice. But in our secondary flight plan, we have our diversion to Bologna. Now you could probably expect a traffic control to give you an initial vector or they'll send you to a waypoint. That's quite common as well. So they might say, okay, you're diverting to Bologna initially route direct. Um, and if I look on a start, route direct to Bamek. Uh, and then what I could do if they asked me to do that is activate the secondary and then route direct to Bamek and then sequence it. 
So what do I mean by that? that? That might be a bit confusing to some of you. So the secondary is currently not active. It's just a, it's just another fictional idea of what we might do. The flight plan page shows what the aircraft is planning to do. Secondary is a, a, a what if thing. If I want to then use the secondary, then I will activate the secondary by pressing it here, and then it will immediately move everything in here. So all of this routing um, and all of this other performance, it will move all of that over into the primary flight plan. Now, that is a useful tool, but there is another way to do it. We can also go flight plan, select a waypoint, new destination, and we can just type in our, why is it saying that discount? It should stay in the hold. Yeah, um, we could go, same thing, pick a waypoint, new destination, type in Lima India Papa Echo, and then it will change it over to Bologna, and then we can set up the arrival in there, and just like we did in the secondary. But remember, if you do that in the primary flight plan, which is notable by being green, so if you're on the page of the green text, um, if you do it in here, then it's going to happen immediately. It will remove everything you had for Venice and swap over. So in this case, because my plan A is to stay in the hold and still go back into Venice, uh, I would not do that in the primary. But let's say at this point, Venice is shut. It says, right, no good at all. We're not gonna let you fly the approach. In that case, I would uh, just do it in the primary. It's a bit easier, I think, than swapping over to the secondary. One last thing then, what if Venice opens and we can actually land and they say the runway is absolutely fine? How do we do it? Well, you'll notice we still have all of our information. If you go to the perf page, it says activate approach phase here. So what you can do is you can just reactivate the approach like that. And now all of your information was saved in from before and it's ready to go. It has the same approach we had before. So all you need to do is check the arrival, check the approach. And you might need to put in a couple of waypoints or get radar vectors over to um, your approach point. But it's really, really easy in the Airbus. It basically, by default, the primary flight plan assumes you're going to go back into where you just went around from. As you can see, we would now expect to land with 2.2 tons. So now, let's say we were cleared for the approach. They say route direct Laren, cleared for the RLS Zulu 04. I can just do direct Laren. And there it is, all in there. 2.2 tons on landing, performance is all in, and we've activated the approach phase from the go around page. And if we went around again, it would be exactly the same. It would bring up the go around page, it would say activate approach phase, and we could do the same thing, put ourselves back out on the approach. So here we are, flying our vectors round to fly another approach. And this time we would think, what went wrong? How can we make sure that doesn't happen again? Because obviously we're getting a bit tighter on the fuel now, so we don't want to do that. Worth, by the way, being efficient. If you don't have to sit in the hold with the flaps out, I recommend you get them in if you can get up to the right speed. Um, depending on your hold's minimum or maximum speeds. It's quite important you don't leave them out because they produce a lot of drag and you'll burn a lot more fuel. That's why earlier I looked at the fuel flow to decide how quickly I'm burning my fuel. Because if you have flaps out, then that could be significantly higher and then you could find yourself getting into trouble. Let's have a look actually. Um, once it levels out, we'll have a look at different fuel burn. I know the Phoenix is a little bit um, optimistic on its fuel burn, but there we go. So 200 knots level flight, it's burning, as we said, about just under two tons or 1600 kilos an hour. If we go to flat one, the slats don't provide too much drag, but the flaps certainly do. You'll see it spooling up, spooling up. Um, actually, it, <laughs> it was not so bad there. Let's bring the speed back. There we go. Right, put flap two out. It's not so bad there, but that's because <laughs> um, we were in one plus F, remember? So flaps two, look at that. We're burning 2.6 tons an hour suddenly. So, something to be aware of. Let's go back to clean. Good. Okay, now let's imagine Venice does close, actually, after all. They said, oh no, runway wasn't clear and we need to divert. So what we can do is, as I said, go to the primary, select a waypoint, and put in Lima, India, Papa, Echo, and type it in here, new destination. And then it would appear, I could insert it and then fly to the waypoint. Or, I'm just going to raise that, press secondary. Now you can't activate secondary while you're in nav mode. Um, and the reason is, oh, you can on this one, <laughs> um, and lots of them you can't. It will make you put it into heading first. But there we go. So we're in heading mode now, which is absolutely fine. And now, as I said, I'm going to say the air traffic control sends us to this waypoint, Bamek. So we can put direct to Bamek. And this is usually how it works. So you'll, even if you've activated the secondary or even if you did it in the primary, you'll be unsequenced now. The flight plan's got a waypoint, doesn't know where we're going. It's not useful. 
Bam, it goes in there. Insert. And now we start our turn towards Bamek. And don't get distracted with this, by the way, of course. Remember, this is secondary to flying the aircraft. I'll delete out the Picardo point and the manual vector. And, you know, you'd get routing from air traffic control, but in this case, I'll just put sequence it up so it connects up. There you go, Bamek, Edmund, and then in. You could, of course, alternatively, have put in the full arrival, which I could still do now. Arrival, RSU to one, two, and then if I scroll it to the side, let's say we want to fly the Bamek. Um, what would that one be? Five mic. Insert. Ah, now it wants it in heading track first. There you go. So heading and insert. Heading. Let's put it back into nav. Nav. And now we're going to fly the full arrival. And now we're in a similar position to how we were earlier. If you go to the perf page, it's all set up. We put in the need to put the new minima in. Um, but we don't actually because we did that. That's the minima from our uh, secondary flight plan. Put the new go around ashute in, whatever it is in Bologna. And then you're going to start thinking about how much fuel are we going to arrive with. So let's have a look. 5,000 feet, we're actually going to arrive with 1.7. So the Airbus puts it into amber for us to warn us that this is now getting low. However, 1.7 is fine because we agreed we wanted to land with 1.2 tons as our final reserve fuel. So that's not an issue because we no longer have a diversion. We are already going to our diversion airfield. Something you could do is work out how far away it all is. So um, if we go to ARC, I can see that Bamek is 40 miles away. So there's no point sitting down here. So let's you get a traffic control to let you climb. Plus time, open climb. Set standards and we'll go up to flight level 120. Aircraft will be more efficient up there. Helps it be, well, we can get rid of landing lights and so on. But yeah, and then you can fly a nice idle descent down in towards Bologna. You wouldn't want to stay at 5,000 feet just for the fun of it if you don't have to. Because obviously the aircraft is more thirsty on the fuel lower down. So that's it really. That's covered, um, hopefully, a bit of uh, extra context on what happens after go around, how you set up the aircraft. As you can see, we are now on our way to just fly another approach into our alternate. Likewise, we could have done exactly the same thing to go back into Venice. It's a lot of workload management and the key thing is fly the aeroplane. And when air traffic control, because something that you're not seeing in this video is of course the pace of workload with air traffic control interfering, you get calls from the cabin. Uh, although cabin crew obviously know about go around and they are aware of the high workloads so that they don't tend to bother you uh, at that moment. They're aware that you'll get to them when you can. Um, but yeah, you'll need to discuss all of this, tell people where you're going, um, make a PA reassuring passengers and like I say, deal with air traffic control and their questions and negotiate where you want to go and figure out how busy other places are. Um, like I say, this is fine that we're arriving with, as I said, 1.6 tons. Actually, my climb has not helped. <laughs> uh, 1.6 tons into Bologna is great, but unfortunately, it's not going to be so good if there's a big queue there. So, you know, if there was no queue, we might fly a bit faster. If there's a queue, we might fly nice and slow at green dot speed, nice and efficient, and give ourselves a chance. But anyway, lots and lots of things going on. Hopefully, that gives you a bit of an idea of how to manage your go arounds and what you might do uh, in the subsequent actions and how to get the aircraft set up for a subsequent approach. That's all then for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been interesting for you. Uh, it's been good fun for me to get back into a, a proper uh, in-depth tutorial and hopefully this can help you out in your simulations at home or maybe on your VATSIM uh, explorations. There'll be plenty more videos and live streams coming and of course the podcast is out. We're on to episode three, hopefully working on episode four soon. So do please subscribe if you'd like to see those. If you go on to Spotify and search for From Flight Level 320, that's the name of my podcast, or 320 Simpilot, it should show up. Um, but yeah, looking forward to seeing you again in another video or live stream. Keep safe and well. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.